wanted to be able to add a note at the beginning of it to help some of you at home differentiate the work that you're doing. So for some of you who struggle a bit more with art, that's absolutely fine. I have done three different pieces of artworks and one is a little bit easier, one is pretty medium, and then the last one is definitely quite a challenge. But if you are a friend who needs to be able to do the slightly easier one, what you are going to do is you're going to watch the first part of the video, you're going to see how I cut it down to a square and, and all of that, but then I want you to fast forward through the video and go directly to the one where I'm working on the word home. And something to note is on all of these, you want to make sure that you're erasing those guidelines. So if you look at my H, I would have erased that guideline in the middle because you should be doing it in pencil and you can erase it. This is going to be our easiest one is the word home with block letters. The medium piece of artwork is the word hope. If you want to work on one that has bubble letters and is a slightly harder challenge than the word home, but you would do the word hope and again erasing those guidelines as you go. The most challenging one is the word love and that's where I really got into more detail with the font, the style of lettering. Um, this one is very similar to the one that Robert Indiana would have created. If you are a friend who likes to challenge themselves and you're feeling confident and up to the challenge, go ahead and do one like this one. This The first thing that we need to do is we need to turn this rectangular piece of paper, this is a piece of 9 by 12 drawing paper, and we need to actually turn this into a square because it's going to help our artwork look a lot better. If you are okay with yours being a rectangle, that's absolutely fine. You can skip this step. It will just, yours will just look slightly different than mine as I continue working. So to turn a rectangle into a square, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down this bottom corner here and I am going to fold this up because I want this edge, so the what was the bottom edge, to line up with this side edge. So I come in like this and I'm holding that corner and I'm going to line it up as best I can. So now and I know it's hard to see, but the line is here. Okay, so I'm going to fold it on a diagonal. Then what you can do is you can trace that straight line, or you can just fold it backwards. I kind of find it easier to trace it. I'm using a pen. You can use a pencil. I'm using a pen more so that you can see it, because when I use pencil with this camera, it does not show up very well. So now you can see that I have a line marked. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my paper along where that line is. And I'm going to really crease it. So I have fingernails. I'm going to use my fingernails. If you don't have fingernails, what you can do is if you used a pencil or a pen, you can use kind of the side of that to really press down. And then I'm going to fold it in the opposite direction. And I'm going to do the same thing again. What we're doing is we are weakening the fibers of the paper in this area by going back and forth and back and forth. We're making that a little bit weaker. And that is going to very much help us be able to tear our paper. If you have scissors and you just want to cut along that line, that's fine, but if you don't have scissors, this is an alternate way to turn your paper into a square. So at this point, what I should be able to do is kind of separate 
kind of like in those notebooks where it has the perforated edges, those little dots that make it easier to tear. We've just kind of done that by weakening the fibers of our paper. So I should be able to take this off. Don't throw out this paper. This paper could absolutely be used as, you could design a bookmark, you could design a little sign for your room. So this paper is still usable for potentially something else. Okay, now I have my square and we don't need this diagonal line so you don't want to keep folding on that. What we want to do is make four boxes on this square. So what I am going to do is I'm going to fold it in half. I remember the trick I always tell you is I hold it down, pull towards me, go out to the side, out to the side. Okay, then I open it back up and I have a nice vertical line going through my paper. Now I'm going to turn my paper so this fold is horizontal and I'm going to fold my paper in half this way. So that horizontal line that we just had, I'm lining it up, I'm lining up my edges, I pull and then out to the side out to the side. So now I have four sections. I have one, we're ignoring the slanted line, so don't use that one. Two, three, four. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace mine with a pen so that you can see those lines a bit easier and it will serve as a good reminder that we are not using that diagonal line. That diagonal line was only so that we we got our paper turned into a square. So now you can see that I have my square piece of paper divided into four equal squares so it is divided into fourths. And I am going to use a pen to show you where my pencil lines would be. And then I'm going to use a Sharpie for my final lines, like my lines that I would not be erasing later. So for this one, I'm going to be using the word home. I'm going to make these really nice and big, almost all the way to the top, almost all the way to the side. And it is okay if your H looks a little ridiculous. Mine looks really fat. And that's okay. So then we're going to still do that crooked O, but on this one, I am going to make it touch the edge, touch the edge, and then come back. Okay, so now I have my nice crooked O. In here, I am going to add my M, and you'll notice I am really touching the top, touching the bottom, and making it go all the way out to the edge. And the same thing on the E, and again, it's okay if it looks a little bit ridiculous. There, I'm pretending that the line is there, here, and here. So next what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into block letters. And I'm going to trace over this just so you can see it better because I drew too lightly. Okay. So for our block letters, so here are our guidelines. Our final line is I'm just going to add quite literally a box around my letters. But where it's close to the edge, I'm going to use the edge. So for my H, I'm going to come down the side, come farther over, up. So I'm just really focusing on following the line of the H, not crossing over into anything. I'm going to use the edge of the paper. So here I'm also going to say, you know, I have this is part of my letter. So 
So I'm just going to make this come in. And now, if you look carefully, you'll see that I have a big old H filling that space. This one, my O, I am going to use that pen line because I was, I made sure that I made it touch the sides of the space that I had available. And then you can add that long oval in the middle to make it look more like an O and it helps it, it does help it make it look more slanted as well. Okay, the M, we're going to use the edge of the paper, so and the bottom, then I'm going to come up. I'm not going to touch this, the line that kind of makes a V. I'm going to come down, going to come back up, so I'm making that V shape just a little bit lower than what it really is. And then I'm going to come down. The next thing that I'm going to do, and I can almost use the top of the H, the bottom of where the H is, as a guideline. And I'm going to make that V shape again. So now I have my M. And I need to trace this part. Okay, so there's my M. My E, again, I'm using the side and I'm using the bottom. So what I am probably going to do is I'm going to make the top of the E come down, come back, down. We're going to go around that middle section that sticks out. We're going to come down again and then out to make the bottom of that E. And then I would trace this line right here. Okay, so now you have the word home on your work. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to do the word hope, and I'm going to be using bubble letters. So, we want to be making them nice and big, just like the last one with the black letters. So, H. O. So, nice and big, filling that space as much as possible. P, it looks like it's all stretched out and that's fine. And then R, E, which is also going to look a little bit stretched out because I should have been making them all the way to the edges. So now that I have my pencil guidelines, I'm going to go in and use a Sharpie to create my final good lines that I would keep. Okay, so for bubble letters, instead of keeping the letters nice and squared at the edges, we are going to just be rounding them, almost like we're drawing a bubble around the letters that we have. So I'm going to use the edge of my paper, and I might trace along that just to get my hand going. Then I round that edge. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go around that part of the H. Then I can come across and come across. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to make it nice and round over to the edge. Come up, make it nice and round. And now I have a nice round H bubble letter. The O is already kind of a bubble. I'm just going to make sure that I really make that nice and big and round and then on the inside when i do bubble letters 
Um, instead of pulling that oval all the way down, I actually kind of like doing a smaller one. So this part is all still part of the O. And then on our P, we're going to have it follow the top line, but I'm going to curve this down. It's using the edge of the paper. I'm going to curve under. Okay, and then this, I'm going to follow the top, pull that nice curve down and back. And again, in here, instead of doing this big, huge shape, I tend to like making it smaller. And there is my P. And for the E, there's my curve my curve at the bottom to follow the bottom edge of my paper. Now this one is going to look a little bit silly because I'm pulling it all the way out to the edge, but I feel like my other ones don't quite go all the way to the edge. And then this will come down, back, and around. And so now, and I think I curved this a little too much. I want it more like that. And if you're doing yours in pencil, you'll be able to adjust that a lot better. And so then I have my word hope. If I was doing the word love, I would have L-O-V-E. So everybody's O is going to go into this box. And the O in Indiana's work was crooked. So with my pencil, I'm going to make a nice big O on a slant. So that's my pencil line. Okay. So that when I make this letter bigger, it's going to touch the edges of my box and be a nice full shape. So I'm making it go pretty close to the edges. Now on my L, because I'm doing love for this one, I am again going to make this really nice and big, not quite touching the edges. Okay, so there's my L, here's my O, here is going to be the V, and this one, of course would be our E. Okay, so this I've done in pencil. Because this way I can erase this later. So this is going to be more of a guideline for making these letters into a more three-dimensional shape. Now, in Robert Indiana's, he really used the sides of his paper and the sides of each section. So what we are going to do is we're going to turn this L kind of into a fancier L, and I'm going to use part of this L, but then at the bottom, I'm going to flare it out. Okay, so now it's coming out to the edge of my paper. I'm going to do the same thing up there. Okay, you should be able to see that. I'm going to, I'm also going right, this section right here, I'm going to pull over to here because I want it to be a shape. And I'm going to pull this out and up. Now here, I'm going to come out and then curve up and over. Okay, so now if I trace this with my Sharpie, this is my what my final L is going. to 
to look like and I'm gonna trace along those folds as well so you'll see that it kind of has that tail that sticks off and it looks similar not exactly right but you still get the idea that it's an L okay for the O we are gonna make this touch the top around touch the bottom the side the bottom this side and then on the inside I like it where it's a little bit thinner and then it's thicker so I'm gonna pull a nice long oval okay now I'm going to ignore that middle line because we don't need it anymore that was our guideline so that we knew where to draw the O so now I'm going to trace the outside edge and if you have sharpie at home you might find it easier um, or any kind of a permanent marker you might find it easier to trace those final lines kind of like what I am doing and then go back and erase later because this way you know which ones to erase and your permanent marker lines won't erase if you don't have a permanent marker maybe what you might want to do is just put a little X on the lines that you're going to erase lightly so that you know which ones to erase do not try to erase over crayon or regular marker. It can smudge it, and I don't want you to get frustrated that your artwork got really smudgy. All right. So now we have our L, O. For our V, the bottom part is kind of the easiest because we're just going to come down to the bottom. I'm going to make this side a little bit thicker so I'm going to come down to the bottom and then we again we kind of do that the curve at the top so I'm going to come up and curve okay and then I'm going to do the same thing here so I come out I come up and curve and then up so it's it's definitely not perfect but this side is thicker than that side and that's okay and I did use my original V if you want yours to be a little bit thicker you can pull it kind of next to where that V is and again I would either cross out or erase right now the lines that I don't need anymore okay and that goes all the way down to the bottom of our page okay the E is going to be a little bit tricky so on this one you definitely do want to pay attention we are going to match where this V matches where this V comes in and then we're going to come down all the way and then curve back out so that's kind of like this piece right here but for the E and I might want to round that a little bit more The next part, and I'm going to use this um, for part of it, is I'm going to come in, follow that line. I'm also going to curve down, over, up, and I'm going to do the same thing, kind of like the opposite, but I'm going to pull it out a little bit further. The middle part of that E, I'm going to make a line coming out on either side to thicken that up. I'm going to curve up, 
I'm going to curve down, come out, come out, and fill it in. And then I get that nice E shape. So, then you would go in and erase your extra lines. I am going to trace over mine with a Sharpie. And I shouldn't have done that. I should have gone like this. Okay, so now we have the word love, and it looks very similar to how Robert and Deanna would have created his. I have my love, the home, and the hope. So all of these, um, what you're going to do is you're going to choose what's called a limited color palette. And I did mention that in the Google Slides that I sent out to my students is that a lot of the times Robert Indiana he used a minimal amount of color so you might use three colors you might use two colors um, to make your artwork look like it all looks look like it all goes together so I want you to think about what colors you enjoy maybe go back and take a look at that love image that I pushed out or the actual one by Robert Indiana and see where he used his different colors and color yours in that way. So now I'm going to take a few minutes and color all of mine to show you what they could look like finished. So at this point, I have the word home, the word hope, and the word love. I hope that you enjoyed following along. I'd love to see your artwork and get any feedback and I hope that you are all successful in creating a piece of artwork inspired by the artist Robert Indiana.